Mr. Chairman, with the introduction of the free secondary school education, Ghana National College, always a patriotic school, accepted a total of 927 students, way beyond the number of facilities we're designed for. We did this because we saw the need to help educate all Ghanaian children. Of course, we've had to put up with some inconveniences, but we are encouraged by the knowledge that we are doing our duty to the nation, and we will continue to do so unflinchingly. The greatest potential of this country is not so much the minerals that we've been endowed with so generously by our maker. It is in the minds of the youth. My dear youth, do not misconstrue the berating of my contemporaries as an excuse for you to be less patriotic. I'm absolutely hopeful in your potential to change the country. This is why I especially commend His Excellency the President for making education, specifically free senior secondary school, the priority of his government. The removal of financial barriers to good quality education is the most important investment that we can make to our country. As Nelson Mandela eloquently said, education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. It is rare to receive an invitation to be present at the anniversary celebrations of a senior high school whose existence is steeped in so much of our country's history and in recollection of our collective struggle for liberation from colonialism and foreign domination. Ghana National College is what it is today simply because successive heads and students of this institution knew they had to work hard, carve a niche for themselves, and become a household name in Ghana. You are one of the best schools in Ghana today. Not because of your Agusco, Boutre, or Adisco heritage. It is because you were determined to live up to the words of your motto, pro patria, and in, the, and in the words of your anthem, ensure that, quote, all generations look to thee, unquote. Chairperson, headmistress, rekindling patriotism in our future leaders imposes a duty on all of us to embrace this essence of what it means to be a Ghanaian and thus to love Ghana. We should have the belief that our nation can make its own contribution to the growth of world civilization and be able to generate wealth and prosperity for the masses of its people and build a Ghana beyond aid. All of us gathered here and millions out there inside our borders and outside shared this love for the place where all of us feel completely at home. What is that ultimate statement of patriotism? Most people would say, my country, right or wrong. In fact, as the distinguished orator and senator Carl Schultz elaborated in the 19th century, and I quote, my country, right or wrong, if right, to be kept right, and if wrong, to be set right, unquote. When we make the wrong choices, we must act to set things right. When those put in charge of running the affairs of state get it wrong, we must have the courage, the humanity, and the selflessness to say so. That is our patriotic duty. We should also not be seen at every given opportunity to be running down our nation, merely to realize our narrow parochial and partisan interests. That is not acceptable patriotism. I have on occasion reiterated the point that a government may not be able to make every citizen rich, but with political will and responsible leadership, 
A government can help create a society of opportunities and empowerment for every citizen and thereby reinforce their sense of patriotism. I know no better way to do so but through access to education. Indeed, all the countries in the 20th century which advanced did so because they paid great attention to education. The United States of America, which was the first country in modern times to institute free secondary education, Japan, South Korea, Finland, Canada, China, and India were once like ourselves. They, however, got out of the trap of poverty because of education. They paid attention to education and invested in the development of their human capital. Today, the results are obvious. My government is determined to follow suit and use education as the springboard for us to get out of our problems. Hence, the introduction of the free senior high school policy. Last year, which was the first year of the application of the free SHS policy. 90,000 more students entered senior high school than they did in 2016. And I'm very happy to see some of the beneficiaries of this policy present here. The introduction of this policy obviously meant that there would be challenges of infrastructure that attended this large import. Government through the Ministry of Education address substantially these challenges. A total of 96,403 mono desks, 33,171 dining hall furniture, 3,033 tables and chairs for teachers, 12,953 bunk beds, 4,335 student mattresses, and 5,135 computer laboratory chairs were supplied to various senior high schools to meet the infrastructural deficit. It is not over. More is on the way. <laughs> Chairperson, headmistress, we cannot, however, wait to address all the issues of infrastructure before we continue with the policy. Indeed, that was very much the rationale behind Prime Minister Kwame Nkrumah's celebrated Accelerated Development Plan of Education in the 1950s, which ensured a decisive opening up of the educational space for thousands and thousands of young Ghanaians who had hitherto been outside the educational net and which helped satisfy the manpower needs of the early years of our independence. In the 2018-19 academic year, which begins in September, 472,000 new students, i.e. an increase of 31%, will be admitted into our senior high schools. We had to and have found a way, therefore, to absorb this intake. We refer to it as the double intake system. We're first of all doing so by recruiting over 8,000 more teachers in 2018 than we did in 2017. Secondly, we're going to employ a double-track school calendar system for the new SHS entrance. The objectives of the double-track system are to create room to accommodate the increase in enrollment. Furthermore, it will reduce class sizes. It will increase the contact hours between teachers and students and increase the number of holidays. All this, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be achieved with the existing infrastructure. Far from it being a new intervention that is being experimented in Ghana, it is noteworthy 
that it has been implemented elsewhere and found to be successful in countries as diverse as the United States of America, Australia, Kenya, and Japan. I am confident that the end result of the system will lead to an increase in quality of our SHS structure. I'm inviting everybody, parents, teachers, administrators, students, the Parent Teacher Associations, the Regional and District Directors of Education to embrace this system and work to make sure that it succeeds. Our young people and the future of our country will be the ultimate beneficiaries of this increase. Free SHS has come to stay. Contrary to what the motivated propagandists and the professional naysayers would have you believe, free SHS is going to be a permanent feature of the educational architecture of our country and is going to be a significant tool for the rapid socioeconomic development of our nation.